On a New York street, a man screams, I can't breathe, before he exhales his final breath. In a Florida nightclub, a man clutches the hand of his lover as he pretends to be dead in a mass shooting. In a South Carolina church, nine men and women are murdered because of the color of their skin. In a Louisville home, a father has buried his 20-year-old daughter, killed by senseless violence. In a town in Syria, a man buries his twins, killed by chemical warfare. Their problems have now become prayers falling on deaf ears as we continue to exist underneath the veil of compassion, wearing masks of mirages cloaked in the emperor's garments of concern. As Thomas Merton so eloquently penned, we are living in the greatest revolution in history, a huge spontaneous upheaval of the entire human race, not the revolution planned and carried out by any particular party, race, or nation, but a deep elemental boiling over of all the inner contradictions that have ever been in man a revelation of the chaotic forces inside everybody. You see, this is not something that we have chosen, nor is it something that we are free to avoid. This revolution is a profound spiritual crisis of the whole world, manifested largely in desperation, cynicism, violence, conflict, self-contradiction, ambivalence, fear, and hope, doubt and belief, creation and destructiveness, progress and regression, obsessive attachments to images, idols, slogans, programs that only dull the general anguish for a moment until it bursts out everywhere in a still more acute and terrifying form. You see, we do not know if we are building a fabulously wonderful world or destroying all that we have ever had, all that we have ever achieved. All the inner force of man is boiling and bursting out the good together with the evil, the good poisoned by the evil and fighting at the evil, pretending to be good and revealing itself in the most dreadful crimes, justified and rationalized by the purest and most innocent intentions. You see, man is all ready to become God, and instead, it appears as if it's time for all of us to be zombies. You see, now is not the time for us to slip into slumber, lying in a bed of illusion, resting our head on pillows fluffed with our own concerns. You see, we are no longer able to cover ourselves underneath the blanket of ignorance. Consider this poem, The Alarm. Now is the time for you to wake up. You have been asleep for far too long, and while you slept, the world has changed. While you slept, black men and women have been gunned down in the street. While you slept, women's reproductive rights are being stripped away daily. While you slept, citizens are fighting for the right to have basic health care. While you slept, wars are being waged daily. While you slept, 62 of the richest people in the world have more wealth than half the world. Houston, we have a problem. You see, I am not here to entertain you. I am on assignment to shake a nation from its slumber, and now is the time for you to wake up. You no longer have the choice to remain silent. You see, good people were silent during slavery. Good people were silent during the Holocaust. Good people remain silent when people march for civil rights. You remain silent during the Flint water crisis. Good people remain silent when people fought for equality to love whoever they wanted to love. Good people lay silent as black bodies lay in the street. Good people remain silent where children were bombed in Syria. We remain silent when that boy's body washed up on shore. We remain silent as dogs bit those fighting for water in Standing Rock, as Burke said, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. If we are truly going to battle injustice, it will never be accomplished underneath the veil of silence. We must have the courage to break through the silence and say enough. I stand with them because this is not right. Change only happens when ordinary people stand up and become extraordinary. Yeah. 
And it is oftentimes at the expense of yourself for someone else. You no longer have the right to be a muted bystander. So what are you willing to sacrifice? Can you use your privilege for purpose? Can you vow not to be muted? You see, you have been chosen for such a time as this. You are walking around shining like the sun. So shine. It doesn't matter what you do, but what matters is that you do something. It is time out for selective vision, pretending that you cannot see the horror, injustice, and suffering all around you. The plane is on fire. And if we burn, you burn too. There is no way out because as Dr. King said, we are caught up in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied together by a seamal garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects us all indirectly. So my answer to those that ask me, what can I do? It is simple, do your part. Compassion is found in the small things. Compassion is found in everything. All we have to do is look around and find the humanity in everyone else. It is the incessant drop of water that can break through a mountain, that can change the world. This revolution is as close as your own front door. Thou to impact those around you. Vow to make a difference in your corner of the world and be amazed how we can change the world one act of compassion at a time.